everybody, it's Kirsten. Today we're going to do an activity with plankton. Now when I say the word plankton, most of you are probably thinking of some teeny tiny microscopic plants and animals. Maybe we're picturing plankton from SpongeBob. And all of those are plankton. But what if I told you that jellyfish are also plankton? Or that blue crabs uh, for part of their life cycle are also plankton? Plankton are a lot weirder than most people realize, and that's why I think they're really cool. Uh, the word plankton actually comes from the Greek word planktos, meaning wander. And that's because plankton are really just any organisms that are unable to swim against the current, either because they're too small or they're just not strong enough. It doesn't mean they can't swim at all, but they are not able to swim against the current. So in reality, the waves and the currents in the water are what controls where the plankton go. Now, we might have heard of two categories before. These are these fit well with our normal uh, idea of plankton, and those are phytoplankton, or the plant-like plankton, and zooplankton, or the animal plankton. Um, here you can see a picture that kind of looks like plankton from SpongeBob. He's actually a type of zooplankton called a copepod. But these are not the only categories that we can put plankton into. If we think about um, the life cycle of the organism, we can actually split plankton into two other categories. The holoplankton are again what we normally think of. These are plankton that are planktonic for their whole life cycle. So they are always at the mercy of the currents. Neuroplankton, on the other hand, are actually planktonic for part of their life cycle, but not all of it. Normally they are planktonic for the larval stage, and then as they get older, they become able to swim against the current. So I mentioned the blue crab earlier. The blue crab actually goes through several larval stages that are planktonic before it even resembles what we think of as a blue crab and starts to become larger and able to walk and swim and things like that. Now, because our plankton are not able to swim against the current, they have a couple of challenges in their life. When we think about where in the water column our plankton live, um, let's think back to our, our first types of plankton, our phytoplankton and our zooplankton. The phytoplankton, because they're plant-like, they make their own food, so they need to get sunlight. So usually the phytoplankton are going to be found at the top of the water because that's where they can get the most sunlight. Our zooplankton and some of our, our larger plankton, a lot of them will eat the phytoplankton. So that means that they also generally want to be at the top where the phytoplankton is because that's where they have food. But they are also being eaten by other organisms. And at the top, where the sunlight is, they are really vulnerable to predators. So what a lot of our zooplankton and other larger animal plankton do is they actually migrate. It's much smaller than we think of with other animals. They're not migrating continents and miles. They're migrating throughout the water column. So during the day, when it's really bright and it's easier for predators to see, our plankton usually hang out a little bit deeper in the water so that they can stay safe where it's a little bit darker. At night, when it's dark out and it's easier to hide, the plankton will come up to the surface so that they can eat that phytoplankton. Keeping this in mind, we are actually going to make our very own plankton. So here I filled up a bin of water, um, and I'm going to show you a plankton that I made, but what I really want to see is the plankton that you all are going to make. So at your own home, um, you guys can find a tank of water. You might have an empty fish tank, but you can use a bowl. You can even fill up the sink with water. You just need an amount of water that you can see if your plankton is going to float or sink. Because what we want to do is we want to build a plankton that is somewhat neutrally buoyant. If you've seen my buoyancy video, you might remember what that means. So if our plankton is neutrally buoyant, we don't want it to float on top. We don't want to stay at the top all the time where it's vulnerable to predators, but we also don't want it to sink like a rock. We don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. We ideally want it to hang out somewhere in the middle of the water column so it's easy to go up and down. Now, for us, it's going to be a little bit hard to make something that's completely neutrally buoyant, but we're going to do our best. We're going to see if we can make something that doesn't float, but that doesn't sink really fast. So maybe we can slow down how fast it sinks. Now what I want to do when I create my plankton is I want to think about each material and whether or not it's going to sink or float. So my sponge, for instance, is going to float, but my binder clip is going to sink. 
I need to combine these objects in some way to make a plankton that won't float, but that won't sink really fast. What I tried first is I have a little weird plankton here that's got some popsicle sticks that are rubber banded together, and I've wedged some sponges in here. And when I test this out in the water, it floats, which makes sense because sponges and popsicle sticks float. So what I need to do is add something heavy, like my binder clip, to see if I can get it to sink a little bit more. And now it sinks. But we can slow it down. We can make it sink a little bit slower. Let's see. If I take that out, I'm going to see if I can take a little pipe cleaner uh, life vest and attach another sponge to my plankton. And we'll see if that will help it to sink a little bit slower. So let's try it again. Okay. This one maybe is floating a little too much because the one sponge is still staying at the top, so it's getting a little bit better, but maybe I could add something to make it heavier again. This is getting really close. I want to see what you all are going to come up with. So please uh, go find some objects in your house. You can go outside in your backyard, get some twigs, get some leaves, get some stones, be really creative, um, and make your own like that. And I really want to see how well you all can do. Um, you can make some races, time how long it takes your plankton to sink, see if you can make them sink really, really slow, or even if you can get them to sit right in the middle of the water. Uh, thank you for joining us. I hope you've learned a little bit more about plankton. Uh, I do think they're really cool, and I hope that you'll, you'll go on and learn a little bit more about them and use some of our resources on our website uh, to do some other plankton activities. But please go out and make your own plankton and share it with us so we can see. Thanks.